All right, guys, we got a new video essay, and this is called When Incel Romance is Done Well. Read zero down that on video essay, but... <laughs> the ratio. What the hell kind of ratio is this? And then, here's the thing, right? This dude made a tweet. Obviously, you know, marketing his content, as he should. It got 1 million views, 298 likes. That's a pretty bad ratio. And if you have more retweets and replies, you, you, you know things are, you know? It, oh, oh. And, and then the cold retweet, this shit getting 19K. Like, look at the, look at the, remember, look at the proportion, right? One mil to two, one mil to 300 likes. Less than half of one mil, right? 400K to 19,000 likes. Do you see? Do you, do you see that people are mad? People are really, really mad. Let's see why, though. I wouldn't be shocked if married men got called incels. <laughs> I think it's because of the title, right? It's because of the thumbnail. The term incel. And I haven't seen the video. We're about to, we're about to see it, but I'm assuming that the creator is baiting by calling, you know, him, right? And him, both main characters, incels. And if we look at the definition of what is an incel, Incel. A member of an online <laughs> I don't think you have to be a member of a community who considers themselves unable to attract women sexually. Typically associated with views that are hostile towards women and men who are sexually active, right? Incel basically means involuntarily celibate. You guys get that? Involuntarily, right? Celibate. You combine the two words, you get incel. That means that you can't get pussy. You can't get dick. You ain't fucking. You are not reproducing. You are, <laughs> you are not able to engage in these acts. Not voluntarily, as some of you may delude yourself to thinking, but involuntarily, as in, you have no choice. Because you are such a loser in society. Ain't nobody want to love you. That, that's kind of what incel means. And if you kind of take that to heart and apply that definition to, let's say, Subaru Rokarun, that's not really the case, right? And I think a lot of people are basically just hung up on the term, you know, than the actual video I see. I'd like to actually hear him out. I'd like to actually hear the video out and see for myself. Is this video worthy of this kind of ratio? Let's go. Sick intro. Do women exist for the gratification of men? <laughs> no. Well, some do. Right? No, 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 really. I, I, it's a spectrum. Some women do. Some, some women get a lot of pleasure. They're proud of their bodies and their looks. And they might not solely exist for the gratification of men, but some feel that being subservient and being useful, right? It, it, truly, like some people do think like that. Like don't try to think on behalf of people. Many people think different ways, but this is not a blanket statement that can be applied to the entire gender. Is a question I think has a very clear answer, but for some reason, whether it is those up in the European continent claiming no mere woman can exist in their top 40 characters, except Ichigo's dead mom, or the mountains of anime, manga, and just media in general that have a very toxic view of the role of women in society, you can't help but wonder if common decency is even common. However, the type of dynamic I want to look at is how mm. anime use a female character to help a male character overcome their deepest of insecurities. And of all the animes to pick to highlight, the fundamental point is, and I agree with this shit, anime gets used where these losers fucking, these, these actual losers that do nothing with their lives get reached out by the hottest, most popular girl for no reason. And those are the true power fantasies. And those are, those are, oh, sorry. Those are the rom-com shows, bro. Not ReZero, not Dan Da Dan, right? You want to make a video essay on this specific topic? You should have picked any other rom-com series that exists. There's so many of them, but here's the thing. Do you think that those are going to get the clicks? Do, do you think those are going to get the views? No. ReZero and Dan Da Dan are the hottest fucking new enemies trending right now. So let's see how he pivots and applies this mindset of people that don't deserve anything like like let's hear this part again right let's hear this part again however the type of dynamic i yeah. want to look at is how anime use a female character yeah. to help a male character overcome their deepest of insecurities 
female character only exists or majority exists to for growth of the male character. That's pretty much it. And I, I think that is if you take that premise, you could say that about Subaru. He does. There's a lot of different girls that helps him out. Not just girls, guys too. Okarun? Now nah, I haven't finished Dandadan. I'm only on episode two. But based on what it seems like, it looks like he, the, the whole interaction of Okarun like stepping up is because I say literally reached out. Even if she didn't mean to, she felt kind of bad at him getting bullied. So she went there. And in that instance, it's a girl that exists to make the growth of the guy. Now, as long as the girl doesn't only exist for that and has her own growth, it can be mutually beneficial. Emilia and Subaru both, I think, help each other to grow. Season two, it's very apparent. So in those situations, I don't think that it's a one-way street. It's a two-way street. Both are helping each other. On the outset, ReZero seems like the typical isekai experience. Literal lollygagging, harem antics, the works. And admittedly, it's that stigma that has kept me away from the genre on a greater scale. Unfortunately. if you look closer, ReZero is less of a male power fantasy and more of a male tortured porn. Pretty much. I still think that ReZero has aspects of power fantasy, and people view the word power fantasy as an absolute yes or no. And this is the problem with it. Pretty much everyone fucking making arguments online. They always position themselves into absolute stances of yes or no and don't think of it as a fucking spectrum of it left-leaning or right-leaning. I think that there is moments where you kind of do want to be Subaru. Well, subjugation shit, being a person that knows all the fucking answers, solving it, being a fucking hero, that would be an amazing feeling. But at the same time, the thing that it took to get there, do you really want to go through that? No. While there are aspects of power fantasy moments, ReZero isn't purely about that, and it's all about torture or suffer. If you're literally getting your shit pushed in, you're suffering, you're going through hell in order to correct all the neat shit that you did throughout the past 17 years. But none of this is unwarranted. Our protagonist, Subaru, has main character syndrome. Yeah. He's essentially immortal, an ability granted by a witch in need, and he's been transported into the type of world he would indulge in through video games he would play back home alone, in his room, self-exiled from everyone else. To him, it's just a game, a game that's given him the opportunity to actually do something with his life, and where the world can finally revolve around him. You might not pick up on this as his sense of humor is derived from self-deprecation, but how much Mm, there's a lot of moments where he's like, oh, first NPC found. Wow, it's finally drew a lolly. Even when Otto showed up at the end of season one, right? When the wild fang, the iron fang uh, saved them from the cave. He said, oh, now this is the cut scene where Otto shows up, right? There are a lot of moments where you can kind of tell that like, yeah, he treats this shit as a fucking game. You might not pick up on this as his sense of humor is derived from self-deprecation. But how much of that is a cry for attention rather than an honest description of how he feels about himself is a shockingly thin line. Subaru is a sinful person. His pride makes him think he deserves things just by virtue of existing. He's too slothful to actually become someone mm -hmm. who deserves those things. His wrath makes him throw tantrums when faced with pushback from the world. This person knows pretty much all about ReZero, man. Like, if you're at this level of talking about the different sins and what kind of character Subaru is, this person, like, they understand the show really well. That's it's better than most of the other fucking video essays where they just fucking bait that shit and nothing happens. But he's too greedy to make that stop him from getting what he wants. I'm sure there are others, but we haven't gotten there yet. But like, Subaru isn't a bad person. He has qualities that are bad, caused by the insecurities cemented by his father's almost he tries to be good, masculinity, yeah. but he's still good. He makes a lot of mistakes, sure. One of those was thinking he's entitled to Amelia because of Ooh. who he thinks she is. And Debt that could never be paid back. And what he means to her. Totally separate from who she actually is. But this scene, while making people cringe, has always been interesting to me. Because Subaru isn't wrong. Maybe sometimes his- He's not wrong. He's right. He is not wrong. But it's the way you say it, right? If you look at what Subaru said, it's just like, everything is fine because of me, isn't it? I made sure everything is going to be okay, isn't it? But nobody actually knows that, right? To, to Amelia, it sounds like, what the fuck is going on? But for us, the audience, we've seen him suffer. We've seen him go over multiple iterations and learning and suffering to over accomplish this. And then to say that you have a debt that you could never pay me back. That, I think, is definitely... 
You could make an argument for it that it's correct. He did save Amelia's life. He, he did. He saved many people's lives. Not just Amelia, but pretty much like people of Arlan Village and the people of the mansion too. He also got the insignia back. And if the insignia wasn't gone, then who knows what Roswell would have done. You know what I mean? Like, sure, you could make some argument, but it, it just like, it came out in the worst way fucking possible to the point that maybe you could say he's an incel? His motives are selfish or naive, but he's still a hero. He still wants to save others, and he does save others. He doesn't want people to die, because why does someone like him get to live while others have to suffer through some- He has a lot of guilt with that. That's something I still can't fully comprehend because how much of a selfish person I am. But he, when other people start dying, he feels tremendous amount of guilt. This was seen in season two, when so many people started dying. And he's like, man, I'm still living. This is so, like, fucked up. Like, I can't live with this guilt. Similar insecurities he's had to claw through. That's why the scene with Rem isn't this undeserved male fantasy. Subaru saved Rem. He got involved in some... No one will ever acknowledge that, right? No one will... No, like, it's crazy how many people cannot remember these details from Arc 2, where Subaru literally, not only did he save Rem, but beyond just, like, a life, like, in terms of, like, like, her time started to move forward thanks to Subaru. Until then, her stigma as an Oni, the guilt that she feels for being the one that has the horn while her sister doesn't anymore, despite how their relationship was in the beginning, all of that shit was cleared up thanks to Subaru. But... Nobody cares because the average retard watching this cannot appreciate or understand the story because they just don't care enough to pay attention. And that's what you get. The episode 18 happens. People get mad at Subaru. People say that he doesn't deserve this shit. And while you can definitely see it like that, if you just thought about the story for just a bit more, it makes a lot of sense why Ren would do such a thing. He got involved in something that wasn't his business because he cares for other people. He urged Rem to push on, even if the guilt of her weakness holds her back. Yep. So in return, she asked the same thing of him. Because honestly, the series isn't about resolving Subaru's selfishness or cleansing him of his sin. It's putting those sins in the light that can actually make him more aware of other people's feelings. Sure. And in season two, it's about allowing other people to bear the burden of those feelings. Because Together. being a hero isn't about allowing yourself to be used by a system that would quickly replace you, or being a tool that sacrifices his sense of self for others. Being a hero is about rescuing people while letting people rescue you. That's a pretty deep, profound definition of what a hero is. Letting people rescue you, you rescue them, but you allow them to rescue you too. To me, it felt kind of always one-sided. Like, basically, my definition of a hero is kind of like Danmachi's definition of a hero. Where everyone lives with ideals. That's simply it. Everyone is just living with ideals and they don't come to reality. But if someone is able to make that ideal into a reality, then you're a hero. And maybe conceptually, if those ideals had to do with, you know, not only me rescuing you, but you rescue me too, that could kind of fit. But I get where this is going. Like, so far, this video is really well thought out. This is a very well-spoken person that has understood the story very well and is making points that I never even thought about. I love videos like this to see, like, different perspectives. So when Neurality says... It is a... <laughs> It's this person again. Oh, shit. Yo, this, this girl stop making videos a long time ago, huh? Yo, remember we reacted to one of our videos? Just a reserve section? Oh, that was a fucking clown fiesta. Man exposing the worst parts of himself to a woman, and then her unconditional love is the thing that saves him. But why does the unconditional love exist? You completely forget. You only see Subaru at his worst, and you completely forgot what happened in Arc 2. Why would a girl show unconditional love? Ask yourself that. And she'll default back to male power fantasy. Authors are just pandering towards a fucking incel audience. That's not necessarily true. Maybe if media could exist in a void, I wouldn't be so bothered by it. But as is, Subaru has just yelled at this girl for 10 minutes and then she's had to do all the emotional labor to put him back together after his breakdown. Yeah, you're not wrong, so? I think they're severely overestimating how bad this scene actually is. The way the story uses Rem in the story is not only really respectful in my opinion, but at least compared to other stories, it has- It's not respectful. I'd love to know this person's opinions about how Rem is portrayed because I, we'll talk about it when we get there. I have a pretty 
fucked up perspective of what the average Rem fan is, and they truly don't. They, they, they just enjoy the power fantasy of an unconditional mate that's going to be there for you. That, that's something I do agree with. I think that some people truly don't understand the story of ReZero, and they just see a mate that's just going to be there for you no matter what, even if you fuck up, and they never, like, better themselves. It's fine because it's a comfortable lie. That's how I view a lot of these Rem fans that just, just glaze without understanding. Has really good intentions for her. In the same way Subaru would do for her, hell, has done for her. Rem looks past all of the dirtiest qualities of Subaru, and instead of berating him, which is in her right, she ushers him to never give up and be better. Yeah. Because she believes he can. You're my her hero. Her identity isn't tied to Subaru. She chooses to save him because he saved her. And if she was the only one in the cast who would do this for Subaru, maybe I would agree, but frankly, she isn't. And Subaru does. Auto better and Rem confirmed. The same thing for others later. It's a cycle. I think that's what's missing with female characters. They just exist so they can pump out the main character of the sequel series. And that's not me saying that, because it's an observation, man. In the catacombs that I call the shonen manga experience, where every woman gives their entire being life. Yeah, woman, woman in sh battle shown in anime, they exist to be a damsel in distress. How many times we gotta save this bitch on screen, bro? How many times? <laughs> oh, shut the fuck up, save yourself! Why don't you save me for once, bro? Why, why are you getting always kidnapped? It's not her fault, it's the author. It's the, the, the authors only sometimes know how to write one style of characters, right? And... Lately, I've been thinking about it's probably not a good idea to compare different genres, but what I really appreciated about Dangers in My Heart, not only was it obviously written by a female author, therefore they know what an actual girl behaves and acts, it wasn't this self insert, you know, perfect, uh, sorry, it, it wasn't this like perfect waifu that's gonna be there and save your self insert dumbass, right? It's not about that. She has her own troubles, she has her own shit going on, and yes. She brings out the best side of Ichika and he realizes more of his feelings of like, uh, I'm not a serial killer. <laughs> I actually, I think I like this girl. And, you know, if I really like this girl, I'm willing to do many things for her. Even like, I don't want to spoil details, but he basically built her up too. And she gets her own development. It's not one-sided, it's two-sided. And once I realize that, it's like, damn, it's so nice to have a female character that exists not for the sole purpose of building the main counterpart, but for both, both of them to grow. And I think that ReZero, right? Amelia and Subaru. I think they're doing that amazingly. And to a certain degree, we haven't seen enough of Dandaran just yet. But between Ayase and Okarun, I think they're, they're both building up to the better versions of themselves. If heart to the idea of saving that one special person they love with all of themselves, as the story does nothing to repay them. I don't know, man. I think this is kind of a step up. And by repaying, I don't just mean allow them to get what they want, because usually what they want is the security of the man who hasn't given a crap about them the entire story. Sasuke and Sakura. And why I'm so happy that bitch got knocked up and he left while Naruto and Hinata and they all have a happy family. Not really a happy family. I haven't seen Boruto, but there seems to be a lot of like father-son issues, man. Like what the hell is going on there? But... I'm, I'm still, it's fucked up for me to say, but I always hated that bitch for being mean to Naruto, even though he was always there for her. And finally, when Naruto gets his own girl and lives a happy, quote unquote, happy life, and Sakura gets knocked up and, he, and Sasuke just fucks off, it's just like, you deserve that. You deserve that shit. I don't feel bad for you. Until it's relevant. I mean being paid with a moment in the story that they're allowed to exist outside of their male counterparts. An example of that people usually give is Ochako, uh -oh. a character whose relationship to her favorite- mm, I haven't really seen My Hero, so I got no clue. Are, are they a good duo? <laughs> Should we even get involved in this? The My Hero fandom is kinda crazy! Boy, is one or two conversations in arc and no endgame material. Sorry anime onlys, but don't get your hopes up. Finally, a woman who can exist outside of the male main character. Okay. Except when she does, she makes an other embarrassment out of her goal and doesn't succeed in the slightest. And that's just one half of the new gen dynamic duo. Mm. I wish I can go and- That was kind of ambiguous and vague, but obviously he doesn't want to give too much details to spoil the show, but it's sounding like Ochako... At the end of the day, she was independent, but her resolve had to do with bettering Deku, therefore bad? I I'm not sure. In the detail about how Jujutsu Kaisen treats its female cast. I... 
love and hate how to just the Kaisen treats their female cast because JJK whores out its guys more than the girls, and I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> There's a lot more fan service for the ladies who wants than the guys. You know, I'm just give me a little bit more maymays, you know, just, just give me a couple more waifus for me to just like look at like I It's a bunch of dudes, <laughs> nothing wrong with that, but but the the way that the girls were portrayed in Jujutsu Kaisen Strong, independent, I don't need to save, you don't need to save me, I can save myself Maymay, super confident, super strong, Total Aoi's mentor, super independent, super strong, Nobara, same thing, right? But let's just say if you're saddened by the lost potential of Nobara, just assume the same thing will happen to your favorite girl. The status of Nobara at the time of getting shot at Shibuya incident, not shot, but the eye popping out, it's unknown. I think there's a very, very high chance she comes back with an eye patch. And there's a very high chance that Maki and Nobara their quote unquote death? Nah, man. I don't. I, 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 until I get a confirmation, nope. Nope. They're alive in my head. They're going to come back with a different design. Honestly, the best examples of good female characters we have in popular shonen right now are Chainsaw Man, with its women being the abusers and not the abusees for once. So. And men love it. Men love They go, ruh, 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 put a collar on me. Oh, please. I want to be groomed, gaslit, manipulated. Like, so many dudes are so fucking down bad that, yeah, if this is how you get the affection from a woman, then they want that. And some dudes are just masochist and they want to be subservient to a very strong girl that's going to put you on a leash. Nothing wrong with that, but it is kind of funny that, you know, Makima is like a pretty good representation of what a strong female would be in like the shonen series. I, it's a seinen, right? Our chainsaw man with its women being the abusers mm. and not the abusees for once. So nice. there's that. Uh, Black Clover, where Noelle is probably the best character in the story is she? because of the depth Tabitha afforded her familial sub. Well, it's looking like Black Clover did their girl right. Plot? Well, until he didn't. And Demon Slayer. Maybe they fucked up. Demon Slayer, the girls, uh... Mitsuri, Nezuko, uh, there's, there's also the butterfly lady. Uh, is there anything, I, I mean, I don't think Demon Slayer really goes into depth. It's, it's just unga bunga fighting. There's, there's nothing super complex and deep. May, maybe you could talk about like Mitsuri and, you know, the snake guy's relationship, but mm, not really. Is there? there. Yo, what? What the? Why the f it is. is that the clip that's playing? This is to say nothing about how the big three treat its women. If you're not hypersexualized and bleach, you're lying and wait for a man. Go back, go back, go back. Three treat its women. If you're not hypersexualized and bleach, you're lying and wait for a man. You're lying in wait for a. What does that mean? If you're not hypersexualized and bleach, then you're lying and wait for. What does that mean? Three treat its women. If you're not hyper. I need the I need the caption. What what does that mean? Sexualized and bleach. You're lying and wait for a man. You're lying and wait for a man. He's saying damsel in distress types. Like I, I I thought that maybe like the talking point here is like too many girls are and like the whole hypersexualization stuff. I don't think and 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 this is probably not what he's talking about. So this is probably just me going off a tangent. I think there is nothing wrong with girls being hypersexualized. I think that. A lot of girls love super sexy girls too. Same with guys too. Guys get hypersexualized too. If you look at honestly like the current standards for men and women, like dude, they say the girls are too hypersexual. Dude, the guys, you have to be like a six foot four fucking giga chat with the jawline of fucking Adonis with like a fucking 10 pack and like more burly chest. Like the guys get hypersexualized too. There's nothing wrong with propped up aesthetics. I think that's perfectly fine. But if that's all you have to offer in this show, right? If you as a character are nothing but a pair of titties, it's kind of sad, right? Treat its women. If you're not hypersexualized and bleach, you're lying and wait for a man. Whether it's the abusive brother who, despite the series never allowing a proper reconciliation for on screen, you're shown to be obsessed with the approval of, or having your willingness to- Hmm, Byakuya and Rukia. It's been a long, long time since I've watched Bleach, but... He did pretty much. What was his excuse? Didn't he say something at the end of Soul Society arc about how he actually loved his sister so much and that's why he was doing it? He was. 
<laughs> rooting for the execution of his sister. Wait, what was it? I forget how this shit was resolved. I was a fucking child back then. I got no clue what's going on. I, I don't care about these kind of themes. I just want to see Ichigo go Bankai. You know, and I, I want to see Rook and, and fucking uh, Rangiku's titties. But, um... Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe it was just, it, 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 all I remember is that this relationship was pretty fucked up, but it got resolved in a kind of half-assed way, I guess. To be obsessed with the approval of, or having your willingness to being used be applauded by the story, because that's what makes you have a heart. Yeah, women in Bleach can't really catch a break either. I, yeah, I, I, just a bunch of dudes. I, it's just a bunch of dudes that's writing for a bunch of other dudes. That have no understanding of what any non-dude is, you know? I don't think Tai Takubo or fucking... Listen, who am I to criticize these great mangakas be, uh, like behind Naruto, One Piece, Bleach, whatever these battle shows we're talking about, right? But the target audience does not care about these things. They just want to see hype shit. And yes, it sucks that the female representation seems to only exist to serve the man for the better of him. At the end of the day... I don't think a bunch of young kids want to see that aspect of a show be talked about. It's a battle shown and it's a shown in jump. Young men, horny, stupid, excited, hype fights, big titties, number go up, don't care about writing good characters. I think it's just that. So take your pick. Would you rather a woman give and give until all that's left are boobs to squeeze or a woman who tells a terrible person to stop being a terrible person? Neither. There's got to be a different option. It can't be just these two. How about, how, how about again, Anna Yamada from Dangerous in My Heart? Or even Amelia, right? And I'm sure we're about to go to Dan Danan and ReZero right now, right? What? Uh, is this the so abridged? This is like the Detroit of this universe? Yo, so come on. Is a puppet wasteland infested with malnourished children and toothless hookers? Yeah. I think so. I'm not American, so I don't know, but I heard that there was some crazy thing that happened in Detroit where the housing prices were so much higher that like there was a ma massive like exit. There was no opportunities or any type of like chance to live for the locals. So it's like it became like a ghost. Was that Detroit or am I thinking something else? I remember there was like, an American city that it happened to though. Pretty much. Actually, you know what's funny? What? There's another anime out right now that has the whole male who's the emotional damsel in distress trope. Dun dun dun. Male who's the emotional damsel in distress. Subaru as well. Is he a damsel in distress? I think that having these qualities that make you not a complete human, maybe that's the wrong way to phrase it. Basically, the insecurity, the shyness, this feeling of being a loser, I guess, because of all the shitty things or the inactions that didn't then realize. But both Subaru and I, I think Okarun starts off like that. But does that making a damsel in distress necessarily? Yes, if the entire story is about other people saving that character, even though they don't seemingly deserve it. Maybe they have a good heart, but I don't necessarily think that ReZero or Dan Dan right now is that kind of show. In fact, there's faults with the female counterparts, Emilia, Ayase, and by them both interacting. And I don't know about Down to Down so much, but for sure in ReZero, there's a lot of moments where it's not Super himself figuring shit out, getting better for the girl, but rather the girl also learning and appreciating life and like growing together as a person. Not just Rem, not just, there's more than just Emilia. So I wouldn't necessarily say they're just damsel in distress is a lot of things. It's better than Chainsaw Man, for one, but for the most part it's a really good zany romantic comedy. What happens when ADHD mids autism type shit. But in the first episode, it actually has what I'm talking about. Mm. See, Ken... Sorry, yep. sorry, didn't mean to. Okarun is a loner. He's kind of a freak because he's so quiet and nerdy. Yep. His love for aliens comes from the fact that literally no one on Earth would want to be his friend. But That was some sad shit. Just drop this live story for this episode. I, my passion for aliens is because I have no friends. And maybe they'd be my friend. That changes when a woman comes into his life. If it wasn't for Momo, Okoron could have definitely turned out like Subaru. An obsessive, insecure Neek who only cares for himself. Yeah. So obviously Momo is just amused for Okoron's desires as a man, right? 
Well, that's what it seems like based on episode one, but how can we conclusively just like label this entire series as Okarun being a damsel in distress saved by Momo or Ayase? It already looks like Ayase is doing some introspection with her life and kind of like trying to be... I don't know if she's trying to be better, but I think she's actively thinking as she, you know, hangs out with Okarun. Because like her entire thing is she wants to date like a manly man. What the fuck is a manly man? I don't know, but she has this actor she likes, that Ken guy, and she dates this like delinquent guy in the beginning episode. And it's so crazy where I thought the delinquent's being the asshole to the girl, but no, I actually was honestly being very rude. And when I realized that they were dating, it's just like a shock of what? <laughs> this is kind of funny, but I'm sure as she spends more time with Ken, uh, with the, uh, you know, his name is Ken, but we can't say that yet. It's Okarun because she doesn't want to associate the Giga Chat name Ken with this fucking dweeb. Not just yet. There's moments where I think I say is figuring out what might she actually like. And it's not so one-sided. At least maybe I'm reaching, but based off of the two episodes of Dandan, Dan, that's what it seems like. And for ReZero, again, completely not the case. Two-way street for many other girls, not just Subaru getting better, but everyone else getting better. But that's not true at all. Because, again, in this instance, they save each other. Yeah. Because as a Giru, no one really treats Momo properly. This is com What's the title of this video again? When Insta Romance is done well. I was expecting a shift, but it says it's done well. So now he's basically going to speak about the same talking points about how Dandaran Dan and Reezer do the same shit they do well. I've been defending and listing my talking points throughout the entire point as we enter into section 3 because I thought it was... I got baited by the word install. I, I, I just saw a bunch of ratio of dislikes, I saw a tweet go off, but it's looking like we all have the same opinion. Compounded by her also getting bullied as a kid for her family's fascination with spirits and espers. So it's not like Momo only exists as someone whose entire being is about saving Okuran. They genuinely love each other, and their united special interests, along with the series' comedic shenanigans, ensure that they can't really be apart from one another because yeah. they would just be left in this big, scary sci-fi world by themselves. I gotta be honest, I don't think this is a male, female, or incel issue. A lot of media tend to relegate characters into a certain role, and those characters can never exist outside of those roles. But just because a person is kind enough to sway someone from their toxic behavior, that doesn't mean the value of that person plummets, and that they're just a vessel for other people. Being someone who helps, being someone who's able to forgive someone's worst tendencies, it's a great so that thing. they can be motivated to change for the better, doesn't have to come at the cost of who you are, your autonomy, or your happiness. It doesn't have to erase your worth. Not a lot of stories get that, but I'm so glad these at least do. Let's talk about this video. I think it's a good video. And you guys should go check it out. But I think um, the point of this video right now is not about ReZero Dandadan. The point of this video is what happens when you fail to deliver on the promises on the title of a video, right? Because this says when incel romance is done well. And is this volatile? Of course it is. He's not even, they're not even using the word incel correctly. And that's why. People are, are mad and super mad and getting such an insane ratio because they're fixated on the word insult. If the title was different, this video would be loved and accepted and have many more likes. But here's the thing, right? It, it's, it's not about the video. It's about the packaging of the video. And you can't say all... all the, the, the notion that any publicity is a good thing is so fucking stupid, man. Like, I think that you're, all you're doing is attracting a bunch of haters and people, bad faith actors and people who genuinely just want to hate without even giving you a chance. And this, it's unfortunate because this video was pretty good. Like, I enjoyed how this person truly understood the story of Dandaran Dan and ReZero, right? At a pretty deep level, at least deeper than most people that just, you know, watch this at a surface glance. And it brings up even different examples in Battle Shonen's that I'm familiar with and everything makes sense. It's just, it's this term, right? Is this an incel romance? No. And many people are going to assume that like with a video's title like this, that somehow Subaru or Okarun is supposed to be incel. Perhaps what the title should have been done is when a romance anime... Ah, 
what do you even say? I'm, I'm, I'm not, it's basically packaging to remove the connotation, the connection of insult to these characters, but rather how this anime may be pandering towards an incel audience. And do you know what I mean? It's just sad that like, you know, making a whole video just to be wrong is funny as fuck, but he's not wrong. They're not wrong. It's just the video title is misleading. Bro graduated PhD in Yapology from nobody else university. That's just fucking cringe. Every video is like that on YouTube. You chose to fucking click for it. No one's asking for this content. They created and you created demand and people are interested and click onto it. Shut the fuck up, dumbass. You were straight onto nothing, Lamau. Again, see how these comments are going to be even more hostile. I guarantee you, if this title was different, if there wasn't a brigade of haters due to these tweets, right? It would be such a different comment section of people saying, wow. You had a I, I feel the exact same way about you. You know what? I never even thought about these shows like that, but like you have a lot of good points, but a lot of dumbasses are going to just see the title. They're going to get triggered off of this shit. And can you really blame them? Right? Like it, you, you, you did, you, you did do this, right? It's come on. Like <laughs> everyone knows what we're doing here. We're all playing the game of YouTube. We're all trying to create sensationalist titles and thumbnails. And you're trying to bait and you're trying to get the outrage. And this happens to be an example where it gets the attention from some insane people on Twitter. And maybe there's some partial truth to it. And you're going to get dogged on. And it's just sad to see this happen. But I think it's a pretty good case study where even if a video is good, the packaging and the way that it's presented can really piss people off. Please go check out their channel if you haven't. Here's the link and I will see you next time.